Hi everyone, today I'm going to do one of the looks that I created for Dumbo for Ava Green and I know last week we had a video with Ava and I just discussing it and we asked you to kind of vote for which look you'd like to see. I thought there'd be one clear winner that was way out front of everything else but actually it was so close that it was the gold look but only by a tiny amount so that's the look I'm going to do today but because the red look was so closely behind and all of the red carpet looks were really, really popular as well that I've decided I'm gonna do more than one. So we're gonna start with the gold look today. I think this is quite a nice one because it definitely works. You, it can be adapted for all different skin tones and it's more of an intricate look. It's quite fun. It's good for a fancy dress party. And I have a beautiful model today. Her name is Elizabeth. And before I start the makeup, we are lucky enough that we've got Alain Pichon, who's the hairdresser that created the, the wigs for the movie. And he's brought along the actual wig. So he's going to put it onto Elizabeth before I start the makeup. So hair's looking amazing. So on to makeup. I'm going to start with NARS Pro Prime all over the lids. So the first step in this makeup is creating this beautiful wash of gold over the lids. It's not too metallic and it's definitely not glittery yet. It's more of a soft, pearly gold. The other thing is that it shouldn't be too yellow or it shouldn't be too green. I personally at the time was really trying to find a gold that matched quite closely with the costume. So that meant avoiding the really yellow golds, but it should still definitely be gold. Now, the most important thing here as well is, of course, your skin tone and finding a goal that works with your skin tone. So it, there might be a little bit of trial and error. So, for example, to find the right shade for Elizabeth here, I'm having to mix two different products. The next step is creating shadow on the eyes. And because the way it's filmed, it, it's quite shadowy and dark anyway, I didn't want to use black for this. Particularly for this look with the gold costume, I wanted the, the gold and the silver to really feature more, but I also wanted a little bit of shadow around the eyes just to create that mystery. So for that reason, I avoided black and I used more of cool tone browns, a little bit of gray mixed in, um, and I used matte shadows. Now I'm using a white pencil just along the lower waterline. So now I'm using the same shadowy tones that I used on the lid, but underneath. I didn't go right up to the lash line. I'm creating kind of a smoky haze set back a little bit from the lashes. This color, once again, is really all about this, your skin tone. You are looking to create a natural looking deep shadow. So it's very much skin tone dependent. So at the outer edge of the underneath, I'm starting to wing out this shadowy effect. This is because I wanted to create something a little bit like old fashioned ballet makeup or theatrical makeup where you have this shadow which is set back from the lashes and which extends at the sides but is um, done in, in a rather sort of theatrical, albeit quite soft way. Now I'm using a white liquid liner. I am going to sculpt a little bit of depth either side of this later on. And this really comes from lots of different ideas. It, it comes from theatrical makeup, even comes from 60s makeup. So just starting to shade around that white a little bit more. And I'm going to intensify this later on in the makeup. So now I'm going back in with the lid shadow and just starting to blend those edges and giving it more shape. I'm actually going for a very round shape on Elizabeth's eye because I think it looks more 20s on her. This is the shape that I went for also on Ava but I actually winged it out a little bit more on her eye shape just because it suited her more. I'm using a bigger fluffier brush here just so I can soften those edges as well. So I'm just putting my first layer of lower lash mascara on. This is going to be really important because we want that big eyed look. So for the silver liner, I don't actually have the the one I used anymore. It was, it was discontinued, sadly. Um, it's a shame, it was a Dior one, and the reason it was so perfect, because it was a nice combination of being metallic, but not solid metallic, and it was also had quite a glossy, wet look to it with glitter but the glitter was quite spaced out so I'm actually going to have to mix two different products to create an effect similar to that one 
So I'm going to start with this one, which is more metallic, just tracing along the lash line, really close to the lashes. Then over the top of that, I'm going to use this one, which is more of a, a classic kind of glitter liner. So this has the glossiness. This time I'm going to use this more at the inner corner, then go all across the liner that I've already used. And I'm going to extend this to sit just on top of the white liner. Now, a really good curl of those lashes. I'm using black mascara on the top, mainly at the roots of the lashes. Now I'm using some false eyelashes, but they are quite an unusual shape. They're also brown, and I just feel these are more in keeping with the era. Back into those lower lashes for a second coat, just really getting down to the roots again. So while all of the lashes are settling down, I'm going to move on to base. I've mixed a great color that matches Elizabeth's skin tone and I'm going to put on quite a good layer of foundation. This is definitely about more of a performance. Um, but at the same time, I don't want it to be too heavy and I don't want it to look too cakey. So I'm just building up those layers slowly. Also using a touch of concealer under the eyes just to lift any shadows. I'm also using concealer around the nose and other areas of the face. I just really need this very even blank canvas on which to create the next stage. So the powdering was really key. I actually used a mineral powder because I'm going to be using a lot of powder blush next. I wanted to have that really beautifully even powdered face, but to also have a little bit of luminosity still in there. So I found that the mineral powder not only gave a little bit more coverage as well, but also on film, I had that lovely luminous feel to it. So before I go on to that blush, I'm going to do the glitter at the inner corner of the eye. And I know I said in the, uh, when I was chatting with Ava that um, glitter wasn't even invented at the time this movie was set, but we're taking some artistic license here and I actually use two different shades. So the first shade I'm going to use is a more yellow gold and I'm going to apply that all at the inner corner and coming up around the, slightly around the top and underneath the eye. And then just at the very corner, I'm using more of a cool tone glitter. So this is a slightly more silvery gold glitter. Back in again, just with these corners and just making a little bit more crisp, that shading top and bottom, just to slightly give a little length at the side of the eye and to frame this white shadow. Onto the blush, which is really one of the most important parts of this makeup and one, definitely one that I enjoyed doing the most. Unlike the red look with the red costume, where it was definitely more about the hot pinks and the reds, this blush was, I used about seven or eight different shades of powder blush and eyeshadows. They were all pretty much matte, although some of them are slightly pearly, but not slightly shimmery, but not so much. And the kind of colors I was using was definitely more of the apricots, the oranges, mixed with the sort of pastel pinks and the blue pinks. And my idea was that it would look more like a watercolor. So I would dab on, as you can see here, dabbing on a little bit of the orange to start and then trying to just build the pinks around that so that you couldn't really see all the different shades that were used. One sort of blended into the next and it, it definitely felt like doing a watercolor to me. And then bringing those colors up around the side of the eyes, washing onto the lids as well, and then creating this um, just beautiful gradation of, of colors. But also I wanted the effect to be very there and very theatrical at the same time. Now, the colors that I've chosen uh, for Elizabeth suit her skin tone very well. Now, if you do have a richer skin tone, of course you can still do this look, but just look for blushes which have more pigment, less white based and are brighter colors, just more that suit your skin tone. The blush also goes right up to the lower lashes in this look. So before I go on to brows, I need to go back in with my gold pearl pigment, which was the first thing that I used. This time I need to brush right up into the brows. So for this look in the movie, we tried out so many different types of brows. 
I tried out a bleached brow, a, a soaped down brow, so really a blocked out brow, a gold eyebrow with gold pigment. Um, and in the end, we went for something which was more as thin as we could, but definitely working with Ava's natural brow. So that's what I'm going to do here with Elizabeth. So I'm just going to draw on something which feels still of the era so it's quite 20s and thin but I think um, you could definitely just follow your natural brow line with this look just extend and um, keep it as, as, as thin as you naturally can so we did try out lots of different lip styles for this look um, at one point we were trying out a very 20s shape so very small very cupid's bowy very tiny clara bow 1920s kind of movie star look but in the end, we decided to work more with Ava's natural lip shape, maybe just a tiny bit smaller. And the whole point was just to have this extremely pigmented, almost like we've used a powder. We did actually use a powder, but I'm going to create the same effect with um, a blue red and a, a, a very orangey red, intensely pigmented lipstick. This is Velvet Morning and Velvet Ribbon and just really layering and layering and layering until you've got that saturation of, of color. Now that I've roughly got my shape and I've blotted the lips, I'm gonna go back in. I'm gonna put some on straight from the bullet because I want a lot of product on the lips. And then I'm also gonna pat some more in as well with a flat lip brush. And the finishing touch to this makeup was the Black Star. I did have these made by Face Lace because I wanted a matte black star and I was very fussy about the size that I wanted. So these were, were made for me and um, they were just perfect because they're ready to go. You just stick them on the face and they really stayed on. Even when Ava was hanging upside down, swinging through the air, they didn't come off. So that's how I created the makeup for Colette Marchand. And thanks to Alain so much for bringing us the actual wig. Hope you enjoyed it.